Hey, and welcome back to another Twin Motion video. And in this video, we're going to look at a new update to Twin Motion. We just seemed like we just did this, but this is 2023.2 preview two. Wow, another preview already. Cool. And this preview, if I'm being honest, has a lot more information in it than I would have expected. But just know that in the full release of 2023.2, we'll get all of the features from preview one and two and I doubt there will be a three. There never has been, but we will see, I guess. Okay, so getting into it now, if there's at any point in this video you happen to learn something, guys, come on, like the video. Please demolish the like button. It really helps me out quite a lot. You know the drill. And let's get into it now. So the first biggest thing with Twin Motion 2023.2 Preview 2 is the fact that we now have animations and we can import animated objects. That's it seems less exciting whenever we look into the library here and we go into our tools and animators. We have a rotator and a translator tool. We've, we've had these for probably since 2020 at least. And that basically allows you to apply an animation of a rotation or a translation to any object that you bring in or import. That's, that's really cool, really simple stuff, but it's nice. You know, we can, we've always had that for a long time, but now we can achieve an animation from any sort of object that has an animation associated to it, specifically an FBX or a GLTF file, or I think a GLB, uh, we'll cover those more specifically, but that means any object that you import that happens to have that animation data is just going to come in with it and you can totally use it. There's lots of functionalities with it that allow you to do what you want to do. So the th first thing I did was go to Sketchfab and I typed animated because I wanted to see something animated and okay, clearly this dragon, if we're being honest, I, I want this dragon to be animated. So I'm going to bring this in and you know, I, I know it's animated. At least it says it's animation, but, uh, not, not seeing it. I just see an animation. I don't see an animation expanding this here. Just, just the object. So clearly this is not the way to do it. And this is one limitation that we have with this new update. Obviously we have, have to bring it in. We have to import it. It's not something that comes directly out of Sketchfab or anything like that. But uh, what I do want to show you is that I was correct and that this animation exists within this model, but I can go to open in Sketchfab and obviously um, it will open it over here. And because of Sketchfab's integration with Epic Games, if you sign in to Sketchfab with your Epic Games, everything's free. You can bring it in, no problem, download it. But you can clearly see whenever I come over here and I bring this window over, this is exactly what we want. We want this. And so this model does exist and we're going to bring it in, which is fantastic stuff. Okay. So I have taken the, gone to the effort and take the liberty of downloading this already. And so we go to import this here. There's actually a new tab specifically called animation. I wonder what that's for. Um, if I open this here, we can see that we have all the different models that I have downloaded here to test this out. Um, but the one we want is actually this one. It happens to be a GLTF file. And the nice thing about this obviously is that here are the three different file types. Again, the, the FBX, GLTF, GLB files that we can possibly import in that have an animation, which is cool. Okay. I'll press open. And now the one thing I want to point out is that you could have an FBX file, which I'm sure you've worked with one by now, if you've worked with Revit at all, that any sort of FBX file might or might not have animation data and more than less, more than likely not going to have that. But if it specifically says that or whatnot, then yeah, it does. It will. So that's really important, of course. So within animation, we have um, precision UVs I want to keep, the precision normals I want to keep. Um, that's really all the options. I want to keep the scale. Obviously, we're going to affect the scale if we want, and then that's going to be it. I'm going to press import. It's going to read it in, and we're going to see this icon down here with a circle and three bars, and that tells me that even it even shows the file type there, GLTF, uh, but it's going to show me that that's an animation. Also, I can see that in my my scene over here, I could see that the there's a folder, but over that folder is that same icon indicating the animation. And so that tells me that there's an animated object somewhere in here. So if I click this, we need to find this and it's clearly over there, but let's go ahead and move back here and bring it here. And oh, look at that. There's a freaking dragon in twin motion that I brought in, didn't have to animate myself, that it has animations. It's ready to go. I mean, tell me this is not awesome stuff. And it just, it's animating all the time. Okay. Fantastic. We've got it imported and it acts like any other object. I have my XYZ, uh, here, 
with all the different information that I might want to see. And I can change the scale, the size, anything like that, pressing tab. Uh, obviously want this dragon to be a bit bigger because I mean, who doesn't want this dragon bigger on our screen? Okay. So uh, going to our scene here, I want to expand this and just show you there's a lot here and a lot here that I, I don't necessarily care about. And that's just kind of the way it is. I don't care about this and we don't need to. So I'm telling you, don't worry about it. But you can see a little skeleton here, which is going to tell us something here in a second. But I want to expand the properties and we can see that we have play mode and that's there's an off. There's a once and there's a loop. So basically, do I want this animation to be off or do I run into one run once or loop it? If I press once, it's going to loop. Or if I if I have it go once, it's going to go once throughout the animation. And it just so happens that this animation does loop, but there's a point here that it will stop. And we'll see that in just a second, but obviously there we go. Um, there's a speed. If I want this to, you know, literally flap its wings faster or slower, that type of thing. Um, if I want to start delay, if you watched one of my previous videos done years ago now, when we first got the ability to add translations, animations to any object, I basically had like a building construct itself onto the site and it was a video and, it was a great idea, but because I couldn't specifically time or regulate when an animation would go off, it just would not work correctly. And so I, it just, it was terrible. And I did not have those options at all. Uh, we'll look at the translation and rotational settings for uh, basic animations to see if we have these types of controls over them in the future, in a future video, when we look at animation specifically. But as of right now, if I change the start delay to five seconds, Obviously nothing's going to happen, but if I press off and then I go to loop, it's going to wait five seconds before it does anything. And so that's, you have a lot of control. And basically this is going to reset whenever you start a video or start a GIF or anything like that. So you have full control in that sense. Uh, moving down now, we have animation range in and out, 0% to 100%. This is exactly what you think it is. Uh, if for some reason I didn't want to see the first 10% of the animation, I could just simply cut it out, only see... 10 to 100%. Now, what this will do is that my loop will not actually loop if it happens to loop because it'll skip between 0 and 10%. It'll just completely skip that. So we'll see that here in a second when it, once it gets there, that right there. Just uh, Let's go ahead and speed it up. You can see this as we bring this value up. We're just going to miss portions of <laughs> the animation. It's just going to look real funny. Um, now we're just missing half the animation. So like you get the idea that there's there's things that you can do. You have full control in or out. I don't see a good reason of not keeping this at zero or 100 just because uh, I want the full animation as it stands and as it is. Um, as we come down here, we could see, yep, there's our little man. There's our kind of rigged skeleton. Um, and this is going to denote all the different animations that are associated to this particular model. In this case, I only have one, uh, which is fine, but I have the option of clicking none and basically stopping it, which is cool. So if you wanted to stop it in a particular place, that's how you would do it, which is nice. Um, but just know that if I turn it off here, I, no matter what I choose up here, it's not going to work. Um, and but likewise, if I put it off here, it's as if I put it to none there, even putting it flying there doesn't actually make the animation go. I have to have both of them off of off and then off flying as well as the chosen animation. So those are the basics of the animation, which is cool. And so that type of thing, can be with any object that you bring in from Sketchfab or wherever it might be. You can rig it up yourself um, if you want. Really cool stuff. Really nice to be able to see something like this. All right, I'm just going to leave him flying. But the next thing we want to look at is very small, but it's within the media tab. We can see that I've got a, a bunch built out here. And let's say I want more details on this one. Um, obviously, there's a lot here. And I've, I've built this specifically and I framed this specifically for this shot. And I, I like it minus the dragon. I might I might take him out of here, but um, it is what it is. So with that said, if I expand these dots, there's actually some option here called media preview. And if I check this, I could see, whoa, I actually have a like a window of my actual shot, which is cool. I can literally just leave all of this and I can run around and I can maintain this this shot, which is really interesting. I, ne I never thought that this would be so useful. So basically what I can do is come in here and say, oh, well, maybe this model actually should be somewhere else. And so if that's the case, you know, I can move it. And in real time, you could see that element move down here in the preview, which is really cool. I never thought it, that'd be in that interesting, but um, it's not really told what's what these icons are, but I can tell you because I figured it out. Uh, the line with the squigglies is low quality. Oh, there it is. The When you hover enough, it will show you low quality and then high quality. So 
I don't see much of a difference in this preview, um, but obviously I want that element back. But I can even unlock this right now. It's unlocked. It's locked. I can unlock this, and it shows up as a window. Literally just a window. I can just throw this on another screen, which is really interesting. Really, really cool. I've got the name of the view and everything, and I can continue to model and build as if I'm, you know, trying to frame everything perfectly out for that shot. Which is really cool. I like that. It, it's very small, but it's helpful nonetheless. So um, I'm going to exit medium mode here and just note whenever you exit medium mode, the, the window will close, the preview will close. And so you, it does require you to be uh, within medium mode. The, the next big change has to do with a painted and scattered vegetation. So that is nothing new. We could find that in the populate tab and then foliage uh, paths is there of course as well. And then scatter, we could either paint or scatter. Um, I've actually got one built so far, like just minimally. But what I want to point out is, is actually the new feature. Right here I have a, a painted vegetation. Nothing too special. I, I've added everything here. Um, it's nothing that we're not used to seeing. Um, if I come over here to obviously my vegetation, this is everything that is and has been always included uh, in painted vegetations or scattering. Uh, we've been able to apply all of these objects, which is Obviously, it makes sense, uh, but then with the new update, we are able to add literally any object to painted vegetation, which is a bit interesting that it's still called painted vegetation, but regardless, it doesn't matter. But what does that mean? That means I can put anything in here and it will paint just like its vegetation. So we have to get a little weird with it, but maybe we want to look at something, you know, that's outside, like a trash can, like this type of thing. We can add that and look, look, look how funny this is, how ridiculous. We have a bunch of these trash cans and they're different sizes, different places, everything, but they're scattered just like all of the different vegetation is. And obviously if I wanted to paint more, we're going to start to see more of those trash cans and rocks and grass, everything pop up. It's so hilarious, but just like every other element within painted vegetation, I have the option to change the density. So of course I can, I can change that if I want to see less trash cans, but Maybe I do. I probably do. But um, this would not be a silly video if we did not add something ridiculous to this. And of course, where would we find that? Uh, of course, you know what it is. We're going to add this guy. We're going to add this guy there. And yes, this does not just make this scene fantastic. <laughs> this really drives the new feature home and what you could do. You know, if for some reason you need more toilets, just make it more dense. Uh, if you're having a decent day, then, you know, 20 to 30 percent is fine. So I, again, wait, this is silly, but where does this come into play? Well, I can put in any sort of object in here that I, that I wish. And so maybe you're scattering cars in random play. I don't know. Maybe you're scattering buildings for all I know. Um, it could be anything, which is fantastic. And it could be basically as much as you want. And you just continue to paint this and we get more toilets and more trash cans and grass and everything showing up. And I mean, who doesn't like this? Who doesn't love this? So that is fantastic. Now, one limitation with this, obviously, is we just said every single object can be added here. Now, if I were to add something like this dragon to it, I would not at this point have the animation that would play with the scatter. So I can scatter it as many times as I want and have it animated, but I can't quite add it to a painted vegetation and maintain that animation. Now, maybe in the future I'll be able to, who knows, but that, that same thing applies to custom paths. I can't put that dragon into a custom path, which is essentially animated already, and then have it continue its animation. Unfortunately, it's just the way it is. Now, some other update is with the path tracer app. Actually, I don't really plan to use the path tracer all that much now that I have Lumen, but I do want to do a video that compares the two of them. Um, with the exports, because I mean, as far as real time goes, I won't be using the path tracer. You will not see me running around here like this. There's just no way that's, a, that's a joke. Um, but Lumen is amazing. Uh, but as far as this update goes, we have, I'm going to read it here. I'm, I'm going to leave this in the description, but it's the updates to uh, Twin Motion 2023.2 preview two, but it, it is specifically path traced transparency for water materials. And so the path tracer now correctly renders transparency for water materials. Uh, we're now making use of the Unreal Engine's single layer water shading model, which is interesting. So let's, let's go ahead and look at this material. There's not a whole lot to it. Um, make sure I've got my depth here, my water size. None of this really matters. Um, my details. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what we'd expect. Make sure the depth is low enough and I'll run the path tracer and we can see what we get. 
obviously we're, we're expecting some pretty good reflections here now that we have um, this updated and transparency. So in theory, depending on the type of water that it is, we should really see um, some of these elements continuing through. So you can kind of see some of this continuing through, which is interesting. You know, not, this is uh, definitely not the, the feature that I'm most excited about, but it could make a difference. And depending on the type of water and elements that you're showing through the water, you, you know, it's good to know you could see things through the water as you would anticipate now, which is good. Okie doke. Uh, moving on to the last and final really cool looking update. And that's actually to uh, the weather. Uh, rain and snow kind of better react. So let's go ahead and like frame this shot here. Um, and we, where, where do we find our weather? First of all, we go to ambiance, of course, and then in our properties, go to environment. And then here's my weather. So I have, obviously we know we've always had rain, but the ray, the way that rain now reacts is that it does react with the wind a lot better. So this doesn't apply as much to like, uh, a still image export, let's say, for example, but it would definitely apply to some sort of video or GIF or something if you're flying around. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, start to affect some of that wind. So we can see the wind speed is five. And so uh, the wind speed or the wind direction is at 10, whatever 10 degrees happens to be. Um, but let's go ahead and change this direction. And in real time, you can see the direction of that rain change, which is fantastic. And if I just kind of scatter it about, you can see that it just throws the rain wherever. Fantastic. Now the speed, if I bring this all the way down to zero, it falls like perfectly straight down perpendicular to the ground because there's zero wind. Now that's not realistic. Um, so introducing some wind, you see, as I do, it can drastically change the angle of the water droplets and the particles. It's so fascinating. You know, Again, this is not game changing, but it's so cool. The fact that it's slightly more real, like it makes more sense. Now, here's where the real kicker is. Whenever we start to introduce snow, oh yeah, and we start to introduce some snow here. We bring them some snow in, and make sure it's actually snowing. Would you look at those particles? Now that is fantastic. Of course, now we got all snowy toilets, but that's okay. But look at this the the wind the wind direction as I change this. Oh, this is super noticeable. That is so satisfying to do. Just squiggle the snow all the way down. And then the speed, you increase that up. You could really see it fly right across the screen, which is so interesting. Yeah, look out. Look, that's such a difference there. So clearly this looks more realistic <laughs> to a degree. Like it looks more realistic, but it, my gosh, this is so cool. So Really, man, I, I'm so excited about some of these features. They're very small. When you put them all together, just the quality of the program just significantly increases, especially now that you've got a flapping dragon in the snow. I mean, leave me some comments down below if this reminds you of something from about 10 years ago. But that will do it for this update. Twin Motion 2023.2 Preview 2. My goodness, there's a lot there. But I cannot wait for the full release of 2023.2. Oh man, it's going to be a good day. Already been a good day, but I hope you ended up learning something. If you did, please demolish that like button. It really tells me that you did and that you might have also liked the video. Also consider subscribing. That helps as well. And I will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day and thank you very much for watching.